I'm ready. Acts 19. And we'll start at verse 1 here. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether they, there be any Holy Ghost. He was, and he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto Joseph's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Jesus Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And when Paul said, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Verse 7, and all the men were about 12. And when, and he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months. That was a long time. Disputing and persuading things concerning the kingdom of God. 19.9. But when diverse were heard and, and believed not, but spake evil of what of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia were heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrote special miracles, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the stick handkerchiefs or aprons, and diseases departed from them. And the evil spirits went out of them. Acts 19.13 Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjured you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of one, Giva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped, was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks, also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them. All the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Acts 19, 18. And many that believed them, and many that believed came and confessed and sure shewed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it five thousand pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. After these things were ended, Paul proposed in the spirit when he had passed from Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So went into Macedonia, two of them that ministered unto him, Timothy and Eratus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a season. I must be Paul staying with, within Asia for a bit. And the same came, and the same time, there also arose no small stir about the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought to small gain, brought no small gain unto craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of all occupation, what uh, with the workmen like of all occupation, of like all occupation, um, Acts nineteen twenty five, 
whom he called together with workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, we know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but also throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands, so that only this our craft is in danger so to set at, dro- at naught, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. Acts 19.28 And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of Ephesus, of Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught Gaius and oh, Arctisius, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the, into the theater. And when Paul, who had have Paul would have entered in unto the people, the decipher, disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Acts 19.32 Some therefore cried one thing, and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. So they drew Andrew out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander, sorry, so they drew Alexander out of the multitude, and the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned him with his hand, and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of Ephesians. Acts 19.35 And when the t- town clerk had a piece of people, he said, Ye men of Ephesians, what man is there that knoweth not how that city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down upon Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against ye, ought to, ye ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly. Acts 19.37 for ye have not brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor ye nor yet blasphemers of our goddess. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which were which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is spoken, and there are dis- deputies. Let them implead impl- one another. But if you inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. And you know, we're coming down to the end, 19, Acts 19.40. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause there whereby we may give an account of the concourse. And when he had this, thus spoken, he despised the assembly. When I'm looking at here and reading here, and you know, there's, uh, I'm, I'm just going to leave it up to you, Pastor. You're better expounding at this. Listen, a few words, you know, and, and no critical thing here. But, Paul, I love you. This For you to tackle even reading this, because I know you a long time, you were pretty good. You brought it forth. You didn't go verse by verse. You just, this is what I want here. I want people to read the Bible. Faith comes by inclining your eyes your ears and 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 a lot of us that know you we're proud of you today and and that's the truth ernie knows it i I remember when you couldn't read the warfare prayer and man you're you're moving along right now and that's the holy spirit in you and i thank god for that and i also brothers and sisters he prepared to bump me yesterday i didn't see the text because i don't always look at my texts in the morning i'm always uh, reading other stuff, answering emails, uh, uh, things like that. And yeah, I'm, I was prepared to teach today. 
But you know what? I have a rule here. I can be bumped by anybody, anytime. It's because I want to see others becoming discipled by the Holy Spirit in this fellowship. It's not about the same three people or four people all the time. God wants to use each and every one of us. And, and you know, this area in Acts 19, I'm going to do my best to pull some stuff out of the commentaries. I was looking at them this morning. I didn't get crazy with it. There's some great stuff. I'm sure Steve can expound on this. I don't even, I didn't talk to Steve today. I came in early and started playing music, you know, but God, God's miracles through Paul. Well, you can be like Paul. I can be like Paul. John 14, 12 tells us greater things we shall do. Nobody touches that on the pulpit. Not even the word faith people, because they can't demonstrate the power of God. If God's not with them, it's the enemy operating. That's why the rich man had a hard time. Well, what, what do I got to do? Oh, what do I got to do? I don't want to give up all this money. Listen, listen to this. The 12 disciples, the first seven verses. They, we all know they were Hebrews. You know, even Paul. Paul was a Pharisee, so he was a Hebrew. He was beating up people. He was crucifying Christians because the Hebrews want everybody, and even today, the Messianics, in their heads, with, is that they're, they got a lot of pride, some of them. And they're trying to drag Gentiles, and Gentiles are going back to the law. And, and if you didn't see Adam's teaching, go watch it. And if you think Adam's spot on on it, or B, he's a better teacher than a lot of people know right now, and because his heart's in it. And like I said, if anything, anything you like, we're getting a lot of likes on our hits from War on the Saints to our daily people speaking, period. And then comments, if you think something's spot on. Even when I go into Berean sites, I look at all the Christians that are agreeing. They came out of the word faith. They came out of Hillsong. They came out of Elevation. Go look at the comments. They come out of Morris Ministries, Robert Morris out there. He's a word faith preacher. When that woman got that message, I said, thank you. She said, Three times to me yesterday in Texas, thank you for sending me that information. Because, see, when you're ensnared by something, you're locked up. That's what demons are all about, keeping you comfortable in your hopelessness. And, yeah, there's a lot of people. Pharaoh's magicians in his court performed mir miracles, the miracle of throwing down a cane and a snake appeared but moses's rod devoured the snakes and the truth in god's word devours the demons people the disciples were hebrews and such submitted to john's baptism in other words it wasn't hard for them to understand because they understood the baptism coming up and and, and that place of being with god so as preparation for the baptism of the holy spirit which john had promised and they were expecting to receive it but they had not heard of the fulfillment of the promise that is the meaning of the words that are recorded in the second verse on being baptized into the name of the lord jesus well how can an infant be baptized in the name of the lord jesus they can be dedicated I dedicated my grandbaby. And when she's of age of reason, just like all the other, I, 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 you know, Brother Victor, he's an elder. He's not operating as an elder here, but he's, he's got an online. I told his daughter the other day, I said, look, your little boy, she wanted to get baptized. It was too cold when she was at the church. So 
grandpa baptized him, and I would expect that of Victor. I know Victor a long time. So he baptized him, you know, I guess in a lake. I, I wasn't there, but I heard the testimony. And after being baptized in the Lord Jesus Christ, they received the Pentecostal baptism in its miraculous form upon their bodies, and they all spake in tongues. And, you know, another sister sent me a thing last night. Well, what do you think some of these position on tongues are? And I sent her back. The spirits need to be tried. I don't care who's speaking in tongues. A lot of false tongues coming out of Christians. I heard it in books years ago. I've witnessed it live and in color. And the demons hate it when they're exposed. When that singer was exposed in front of her husband, the guy knew nothing about deliverance. And he just sat there and realized when the demon was manifesting in his wife laying on the floor, he realized something. He's been living with a Jezebel. And it was easy for him to unconditionally love his wife, watch her repent, and ask God for forgiveness for allowing the word faith demons in. I mean, you don't want to believe me? That's okay, too. But until you're in the war and you're at that level, you're going to turn around. What Gerald saw at Hegwish, he will never forget. What Gerald experienced yesterday, it'll always be on his heart that God is real. And when you know God is real, no demon can take you away. You get them casted out. It's not inner healing. It's the salvation, the full salvation of why the Lord Jesus, you don't need a counselor. When God called me, he said, upon the earth, I have no counselor. We have the counsel of God's word, people. Right here, listen. I, I, I just want the sealing of the Holy Spirit. We all know that. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, the regeneration of the Holy Spirit, Titus 3, 5. So if you're going to get up, like if I was getting up, like I normally do, I have the scriptures prepared. I read everything. I equate myself. I go, because of technology, it's easier for me to prepare sometimes because I can go, and I mispronounce a lot of words, but when I'm listening to my King James audio Bible, I begin to learn the proper pronunciation. That's called learning, studying. Because there's every person, every intellectual person will take me to the carpet that I don't pronounce words properly. People that went to college, people that got their masters in English and everything else. And yet they don't have the faith to cast out a pimple. So God's not interested in your human intelligence. He's interested in your heart, people. And you see that here in the scripture today. You know, the Holy Spirit takes place at conversion now. Is not to be confounded with the miraculous outpouring that was upon the flesh of believers back in the book of Acts. That initial baptism of the Holy Ghost was so that the people in their different uh, linguists of their every uh, country, Greeks, Portuguese, uh, the Spanish, they all have a different dialect, even in Africa, of communication. The most amazing thing in the book of Acts, when you read into it, they were all prophesying in different tongues that the people that were hearing got it immediately. That's like when we were casting the demon out of the little girl. She was speaking back to Will Manga in Spanish. That poor little child didn't know a word of Spanish. That's what freaked her friends out. The supernatural move of God and how demons can speak in every tongue. And they even have false tongues. And a lot of Pentecostals, if you really, most Pentecostals don't believe that Christians can have demons. That's the truth. And, 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 when they get into deliverance, they freak out a little 
because they're holier than now. Even in the assemblies of God, I've seen it so many times over the years. I've seen great men of God go in and teach a little in some of the assemblies of gods I went to, and demons were manifesting, but it wasn't the assembly of God pastor. Just like my, my wife's grandfather, he left the assembly of God because of error and false teaching, and he went non-denominational. It was easy for me to go non-denominational. The only religions I was around were Baptist, uh, Lutheran, and Catholic. I was under Satan for a long time. So anyway, back to the uh, teaching here today. The Holy Ghost was upon the flesh of the believers is so remarkable. It's a feature of the book of the Acts of the Apostles in which was promised to the Hebrew church. Where was it promised? Joel chapter two. Prophesying, speaking with tongues, working miracles. Real deliverance is the, the truth of the miracle. It's supernatural. It's still working. Casting out demons that was done in the early church is still being done today. We all bear witness to that. But we have a whole world out here that's clueless. And our feed, our smartphones, our computers can touch people all over the world right now because we even do deliverance in the Zoom room. Think about what I'm saying. You know, Teresa, you've gotten a lot of deliverance in the MOS Zoom room. You know? A lot of people come here just because they're not here all the time doesn't it, now they're out there serving God. You know, we're all called to, to go to war. We're all called to put on the full armor of God. We're all called to acknowledge Jesus Christ in all our ways. The gifts were for the church. They're not, they're not, they're not just solely there. You know, I, I know so many scriptures, Colossians 124. I'm taking out of the commentary. I didn't turn to it today because on my heart this morning, I thought Paul was gonna crash me because he wanted to crash me yesterday. A higher and purely spiritual ministry and testimony belong to it. While of course God reserves liberty of action. To himself to do as he pleases. That's why a lot of times, if we're not, if we go back to the basics of prayer, that his will is going to be done, not our will. So don't get, I used to get upset when I didn't see a healing or a, the demon didn't come out right away. Because I, I had ventured in in the beginning, I read books by John Osteen, I read books by Lester Summerall. And Lester was in deliverance. He, he was real. But then I read some of Hagen's books back in the day. I never kept one of them. It's ironic that people come into this prayer group and then they post about how they're burning their books from coming into HBC and MOS. And yet they were in deliverance for 10 years. How come they didn't burn their books 10 years ago? That's how easy people get deceived. And people that suffer rejection, there's a mile high list of Christians that have been rejected. I know that because I've been a minister for a few years. I know what comes out of the people that I pray with. Some of the things I was calling out this weekend and my brother, they were coming. It was like a, a Niagara Falls coming out, people. God reserves liberty of action to him and him himself and what he pleases and what he does. Always remember, everything we go through is God's will, his moral government of man. Speakers at conventions misunderstand and misapply the second verse to the confusion and injury, injury to its hearers. So let's look at that real close. You know, this comes from commentary. 
He said unto them, have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, we have not such much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. That ain't what they say on a lot of platforms today. I know. I used to go to all kinds of churches when I was seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I was in businessman full gospel. Boy, did we kick out a lot of false tongues. And there's many Christians that don't want to submit to it. And then there's a few that do. And boy, you'd be surprised when that one pops up. We hate you. Peter and Paul, I know that was brought into this teaching today. Jesus said, I recognize. And Paul, I know. Different Greek verbs mark this important distinction. The evil spirit knew a great antagonist of Satan's kingdom. Okay, they had Paul for a long time. But he said to the, the seven sons of Sceva, the, the Jewish people of the synagogue, you know, who are you? Only two of the seven brothers attempted this exorcism. So don't, don't get puffy about deliverance. Deliverance and exorcism is basically the same word. You're exorcising the enemy out of the individual. And there, we know there's false. You know, when I was doing my research when I was younger, coming out of Catholicism, I read books by priests. I read books like uh, Kirk Coach, uh, because I read Blumhart from HBC's book room, and that I realized I wasn't the only one that was realizing there was a supernatural that a lot of people don't talk about in the churches. And I got to find books. That's why HBC became my spiritual home. And it's pretty empty there right now. And I'm really mad at the devil. And I'm, I'm mad at everybody that says I'm a believer because people focus on deliverance and they don't focus on winning souls. We need to do both. We want to we wake up, Father, wake up the sleeping church, the one that you gave power and authority to, so there, that there can be a great harvest. They've turned them into entertainment centers. When God enters in a person's life in power, that means when you're really getting delivered, devils flee. Plural. So the commentary is really strong here. I don't know how anybody can miss it. Anyone that even tells me how much they know the scriptures, what are you going to do about it? That's why I answered that guy and I said to my brother, Victor, what would you? He didn't even respond. Because he still got his demons, people. And everyone else around him. I know that front line news and I know it. And a lot of different people that come and go. Because deliverance is a process. I'm still getting delivered. And I love God. Here. When God enters, the devils flee, sinners tremble, and the consciousness of believers is awakened and judged. Powerful. That's, that's verses 19 and 20 today. And the money involved, look, 50,000 pieces of silver have a present value of about $5,000. During this period at Ephesus, Paul must have paid a second visit to the Corinth church, seeing the one next recorded. And, you know, that's, that's going to be in tomorrow's read. 
and twice called, he called a third, he had to go three times to current to straighten out the mess in that early church. There's Christians everywhere that know it all, but they don't want to go into churches that are in an era and take a position and, and be still and wait for God to use them wherever they sit. I did that a lot in the beginning. I didn't walk in saying who I was. I just wanted to come and learn what these churches were all about. Then when I was given the opportunity to pray with people, God began to demonstrate that Charlie had some kind of authority. Where did I get it from? The word of God. It's always God. We can do nothing. It's Christ in us. That's what Emmanuel means. So many Christians are just deluded with and polluted with this is the way we go to school. And they think they can take a weak course in this, a weak course in that. Uh, I was at a, a word faith church called Faith Fellowship when I was younger. And they had a thing called the Act School. So you went and you learned about the Bible for a, a few months. Esposito was the teacher. When I sent him VHSs on real deliverance, he didn't even want to deal with it. Then I knew all this was bogus, going to school, and they give you a certificate, and now you are an axe preacher, and you are a minister of God. Where's the Holy Ghost in all this? And most of them, most of them are not even really serving in the ministry. I've seen so many people leave some of those churches over the years. I've seen people leave Times Square when Wilkerson went home to be with the Lord. They left the teachings. You go online, you, you can see the apostate. Bereans calling out all these big pastors on stuff. But because you're comfortable in your hopelessness, you're going to trust the multitudes of people, not the word of God. It's a lot to chew on, people. A great door and an effectual ministry was open to Paul in this chapter. And he wasn't going to sit still. He even wanted to go back and, and bring the gospel to Rome. The vast field of gospel ministry, which Paul proposed to himself, appears in verses 21 and 22 today. The temple of Diana. What do you think? The world has changed? There's more idolatry now. The United States is not the same it was 100 years ago. It's polluted. Because everybody from every kind of God is coming in. That includes the Chinese. Remember, I, I spoke about how every Chinese restaurant had a different figure, a different idol, because you go to Asia, that's what's going on. If you go to Korea, they're worshiping the little fat boy and his father and his grandfather. They're not worshiping God, but we have an underground church. This is a great chapter when we read it and read it. Diana or Artemis at Ephesus. Ephesus is the pro proper thing. I pronounce words all the time because I'm not worried about the words. It's the point, the spiritual point that I try to get people to understand was reckoned as one of the wonders of the world. Well, New York City is a wonder for devils all over the world. It's a cesspool of demons in people. Chicago, a cesspool. San Francisco, Portland, cesspool. You got what I'm saying? It was adorned with 127 columns, 60 feet high, and each the gift of a king. It contained incredible wealth. The goddess had the form of many-breasted women. I mean, how many people honestly study this? 
how, how many people talk about the truth about the history of what went on in the church and the settings that these apostles had to lay down their lives for? You know, when you study scripture, it prepares you for the great tribulation. I found a good teaching on, and even Steve, Steve sent me something today because we're Bereans. We're not following everybody in the church anymore because the church is polluted. We're following the word of God. And there's other Christians that are like-minded that are, are, are bringing forth the error of a lot of these teachers. And there's people on Facebook guiding people to go to false teaching. And they call themselves deliverance people. I wrote a sister last night, be careful what you watch. And then talking to another sister, I found out another sister is leading people to all these false ministries. I wish I could play my conversations the last month with Shannon Davis. And I'm, I'm not jumping for joy to even go on the show because the more I wait, the more I pray, he's not preaching what we preach. And the guys that are going on there representing deliverance, they're not really doing a lot of deliverance on his show. But boy, the false teaching, the false doctrine, everything we preach against, it's going on, people. You know what I feel like doing? Just hanging on to what we're doing and watch God doing an atomic bomb explosion of his grace. There's error all over the map. I looked at my one brother yesterday, and you know what God said to me? Start praying for him. Start binding and loosening him. You know why? Because of what Paul read this morning. Here, and God wrought special miracles by the hands of who? Paul. Paul was a sinner that got converted and gave his life over to Christ. Scripture tells us the person that loses his life for the gospel will get a reward a hundredfold. That's powerful. If you really believe. What's holding us down? I know I'm, I'm trying to climb up into the mountains. I'm trying to climb the holy mountain of God every day now. My wife sees it. She can't get me away from studying the computer or anything else. Why? Because there's souls at stake here, people. And once again, Paul, I love you. Because this is the part of me that needs to be heard by all these people that call themselves Christians, and they don't imitate Christ. Yeah, a couple of days a week. We do this, we do that, and the rest of the time they're in the world. Don't kid yourself. Go to God in prayer. Ask him for discernment. I, I spoke to a demonized man the other day so I could get some information about Robert Coker. You know what my conclusion is? Those two boys are demonized. Their opinion don't matter. They need deliverance. And when you know people are loaded with demons, why? If, you're not, if you don't decipher or discern the streams that are flowing from people, the easiest way to decipher it is it's about Jesus Christ. When it's about the Lord Jesus Christ, we begin to grow. It's not about the things of the world. Those people don't even believe that their worldliness stops them from the fullness of God. And yeah, I've heard it spoken many times by Pastor Mike and everybody else. I remember when speaking it, when deliverance gets popular, be careful. Go back to the read here. That's, I, I didn't even get into where. I, I'm just so excited Paul gave me a chance to hold my breath a little. Here. Money and religion powerfully move 
through the carnal heart. And, and, and brothers and sisters, it's okay. I'm just telling you what I'm learning, showing you something here. Now you discern what's behind some of these ministries. And where's all the money they got coming in? And what are they really doing with? It's easy to give when you don't have a building. You can have a form of godliness, but in all, you're doing it for another purpose. The, here. But when united, their excitement to measurelessness and violence. The common people believe these images to be gods. How many images do people have in their own lives? I see it all the time. I see Christians walking around instead of wearing something to uplift Jesus Christ. They're uplifting their favorite baseball star, football star, hockey star. I know families. I've been in their homes where they got a wall devoted to the New Jersey devils and they go to the Reformed church. Because they're not being preached the full gospel. They're already ensnared to the God of this world. The wife is ensnared. So guess what? Jezebel's got Ahab. Don't tell me about the spirit realm. Walk in the spirit. You know what's amazing? It's exactly so in the churches of Greece and Rome. The idolatry that's going on throughout the world because of Roman Catholicism. Aristarchus, Aristarchus is probably the right pronunciation in Gaius, are mentioned in chapter 20. They're going to be mentioned again in 22, Romans 16, 23, 1 Corinthians 14. So they've been mentioned quite a few times in scripture. So that solidifies what we're reading here. It's not a one-time event in the Bible for these certain individuals. Even in Asia, the chief officers of Asia, verse 31, they were noble citizens selected to preside over the games, especially in the month of May. So there was idolatry going on right there in the first century. When you look at the town clerk in 35, it rather resembled the Lord, a mayor of the present day. The Roman government insisted on public order and punished with merciless severity magistrates who had neglected it, had the danger. This is the danger probably that was spoken in verse 40. But the statement made in 37 that the gospel preachers did not insult the religion of the people is an example to be followed by all the, the, the ministries that go abroad and even the ministers. At that same time, the apostle, here's what the apostle didn't do. He didn't compromise truth as evidence back in verse 26. Now, a, a spiritual highlight here. I'm going to go back to another book. Because, you know, I... I I intended to put this in through the scriptures today, some of this stuff and some of the things in my heart. But, you know, even when Cecilia and I did the, the read and she did the read, don't be afraid to step up to give me a break. It'll, it'll get you guys more in tune with being able to speak in public, to come out of that shell that you might be in, that you would have more zeal and boldness because your faith in Christ is going to grow. The word in the chapter, the word of the Lord, grew mightily and prevailed. We read it this morning. Paul read it to us. And, and, and I got to tell you, he did not want to read today. He said, I just got up. He, he was in the, the thing early. And at that time, I don't even know how many people, because I was more in tune to playing the music that the Lord had on my heart today. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit upon receiving him. He didn't leave anyone as an orphan when you believed in your heart and cried out from your heart to his ears, confessing with your mouth, Lord Jesus, I believe. 
I want you to come into me, seal me with your Holy Spirit. That's how I pray it. And teach me all things that I would do your will. Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. The simplicity of a simple prayer. And if you mean it in your heart, you're saved. Let's continue. Many people think they're converted, but do not have the Spirit's witness. Okay, my wife is very powerful in deliverance. Some of you people that have been to the church, the women prefer to pray with her. Every woman that's ever been in our fellowship always ends up in her lap one way or another. She doesn't, she don't speak in tongues. She's 34 years saved because without interpretation, it's just a lot of babble. Read your Bibles. It's good for the prayer life. It's good when you're singing and sometimes maybe you don't remember a word. The Holy Spirit groans a little because you're magnifying him. I was praying. People don't like it when I pray in tongues. It's not the people. It's the demons. I got accused of false tongues at Agwish. And that's the truth. That was a long time ago. And they couldn't get anything to manifest because my tongues weren't false. And you know, when someone accuses me of something, they need to come to me instead of running to the pastor. You want to know what I'm about? You want to know if I'm real? I'll put you on a plane and come and spend a few days with you. I'm sick and tired of halfway house Christians when I've given my life over to the Lord. And there's a lot of lukewarm Christians. Read your Bible. When Jesus comes, he's going to talk to the church of the lukewarm. Yeah, I might be a hard pill to swallow. Paul could not have the Spirit's witness within. Come on. Paul could not build the church on men with an inadequate spiritual experience, nor can we do the same today. You got to be on fire to, to serve God, to build the ministry. And sometimes it gets to the point the devil hits you so hard, you, you question, am I supposed to be serving you, Lord? And then that grace and mercy comes down. Try running a ministry without taking an offering. Because I don't want people's money. If they want to support a ministry that's sold out for the Lord, they give naturally. You know, I'm real. I have many books, many years of books here. Shows every penny that came in. And if and I got an accountant that's like frosting on the cake. If I give money out nowadays, I have to have a letter of benevolence. You don't just cast your pearls to everybody. I'm a Christian. I need help. We had a woman come. She got deliverance. We told her what to do to get help. She was on the phone with me the other day. Now my wife said to me, maybe I got to go pick her up to get her to church. You know, my brother Thomas the other day said to me, he says, with the ministry van, the ministry van is there for the ministry. If someone wants to get up early and run around and pick people up and get people to church, I've already told people now, you can't, you can't, I got a brother in Lancaster. You know what I'm gonna do? We'll send him some money. So he's got enough money to put in his, his gas tank to come and be part of the ministry. He loves the ministry. He can't even, he can, he's not, he's retired. He, he doesn't have enough money coming in and he's a good brother. How come God ain't pouring a thousand dollars on him? Everybody wants money because that's what they do. They seek God for money. It's the word fake churches, all these big ministries. Oh, I know they're going to give their money to their children. It's God's money. You can't give God's money to anybody. When it's in a nonprofit, it's got to be used. The best you can do is give it to another ministry that's doing the work. There's got a lot of people are going to, it's such a mixed match out here. You know, people don't understand. Our little groups believe what we read. 
but that's not even being preached on most of the pulpits, people. Read the comments in some of these ministries that are being called out. How many people were in those ministries and left? That's the witness that there's something funky going on in churches. The devil, here, listen to this. The devil is a great imitator, but in this case, his attempt was a humiliating failure. The Lord used it for his good because the believers become convicted about their secret sins and confess them. Then the spirit could work in mighty power. And it said the word increased. The word. More of Jesus, less of me. I've been singing that song for years. That's what the Holy Ghost does. That's what the word of God does. It brings us into holiness before the Lord because we start obeying God. And when we confront the enemy, the spiritual teaching here, Paul did not openly attack their idolatry by picketing the temple of Diana or petitioning the city government. He just simply shared the word of God. Why? Because the word of God, as long as we plant the seeds, God will water the garden, people. Think about what I'm saying today. And, it, and, you know, I understand this. You know why I understand this? Even in my commentaries, I've done the Bible three times through with commentaries. So when someone tells me that they don't use commentaries, they're a one-man band, and they're an island that's never been under a multitude of counselors. That makes sense to me. And you, you can think about that. He simply shared the word and their lives were changed. Of course, the real issue was always money, not religion. Paul was wise not to go to that theater. Although we admire him for his courage, the riot only called attention to the gospel and it gave the believers more of an opportunity to witness. And I've been saying lately for such a time as this. We're to witness Jesus Christ. We're not to walk around and say, well, I can't wait for the preacher. Suppose there's no preacher. What are we supposed to really be doing? We're supposed to get up every day and be about the father's business. Circumstances that look like obstacles are really opportunities when you let God work through all of us. And that's the spiritual and I think I did a, a, a heartfelt thing here about this chapter because there was so much going on that even the handkerchiefs, you know, I didn't write this. Look, let me read it again to everybody. It's all highlighted in my Bible. So that from his body, whose body? Paul, the very clothing he wore because he was walking with God every day. He, he was just permeating the grace of God through his body, through his sweat, through his being beaten and still glorifying God in jail, winning souls in every situation that God showed favor upon him. And he brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. And look at what happens here. He didn't need someone to say, I got the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to pray over people and heal them. The I words there. I could show it to you in Texas. You know why? I thought I could do that too. 36 years ago. And I got upset because God didn't heal the person. Because I'm not God, people. Great witnesses. How come the prophets of God and all these wacky churches that we bind and loose against, how come they didn't warn, warn, warn the body of Christ about COVID? Instead, instead, they're telling people to take ivermectin. Now they're proving that ivermectin don't help it if you're too far in on the COVID. You know, you know what the cure 
for life is believing in your heart jesus is lord we all get to die get over it become a servant of god look what a real servant a real I, i'm not even on this level Listen, I'm going to read the whole thing real slow. So that from his body, whose body? Paul, the apostle, who was a sinner saved by grace. But when he got saved, that was the end of his life. He turned it over to Jesus Christ. Through him, I can do all things. That's Paul quoting that. And I got a thorn in my flesh, but his grace is sufficient. That's Paul quoting that. He's not, oh, woe is me. He's not broadcasting it to everybody. It's between him and the Lord, and he's crying out. And sometimes we need to cry out for things in the secret place. That's something you learn through long suffering, perseverance. Once again, I want to read this. I'm preaching, and, and, and you want to do something? Imitate Christ. Imitate true disciples. Because all these charlatans that are up there, they don't have this authority. They don't even have the grace of this authority, most of them. I watched Don Stewart 20-something years ago, send me money and I'll send you my anointing oil and you're going to... He's a word faith preacher. He's got a lot of false teaching. If you don't, you don't get into what... And they're subtle people. Gerald sat with me Saturday night, and he's new in Christ, and he picked up on the false teaching. They dissect these comedians, these pastors that are on pulpits, and they do it with scripture, people. They, they take scripture, and they show you exactly where if you read the word of God, it doesn't say what they're preaching. And they, they're great speakers. So Satan is a great deceiver. He got a third of the angels to follow him. Understand, it's spiritual. But I, I really got to finish this and close it. Maybe it's because I know there's going to be other people listening to these messages. The very thing years ago, John Yanowski told me, he says, I got to help you. And unfortunately, because of his, his infirmities, he forgets what he said. And he can do whatever he wants to do. I love John. But he's not being healed. And you know what? I'd love to see the day that I could put my hands upon John. And all of a sudden, boom, the supernatural miracle occurs. Because, you know, I've met a lot of people. And, you know, that brother gets on his knees. He reads the Bible every day. And that's all anybody's got to do. But I, I'm looking at this today. You know, once again, Paul, I'm very excited you stepped up to the plate. And I bet your wife is too, because it's been 10 years in the making. And you're getting better and better. So I'm encouraging you to stay on that track. You know, I'm going to find something good for you, and I'm going to buy it and send it to you. You know, that'll help you on your journey. But so that from his body were brought unto the sick. How many of us are really walking the walk that we can have something like that written about us? That's why I'm recording everything. I got better than a book. I got everything that's going on in my life. We're going to have testimony after testimony coming through this prayer group. It's going to get recorded and people all over the world are going to hear it. Don't think that Zelada is a woman after God's own heart. She's been here more than some of the Christians I know that talk the talk and don't walk it. And, and she's a newbie. I was in shock when she appeared on the screen. I'm from Moscow and I'm in the tubes. And there she was down in the subway. And we're praying for the people of Moscow. We're praying. They're throwing the people that protest in the jail. Wait till that happens in America, people. At least you'll be prepared. Well, I'm sorry, Father. Very passionate about this verse. Brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. What does it say here? Help me. 
It says, and the diseases departed from them. You don't see that going on in America, people. Show me. Show me where all this kind of stuff is going on today. You wouldn't be able to contain the people that need help if it's truly a move of God. And before you can have that move, it's got to become a house of prayer for all people. People got to start getting out of their worldliness and getting into going to God every day in prayer. Whether it be the secret place, whether it be in a prayer group. Yeah, you can call a lot of these big ministries. They're not doing the full gospel, people. Here, diseases departed from them, but not only diseases, like I heard a woman say to me yesterday, well, this minister, he doesn't do deliverance, but he's a healing minister. That's bogus, people. Inner healing. Here, diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Get it? Do a balancing act. Jesus went everywhere. Paul went everywhere. And the, the two most astounding miracles was healing disease. Disease. No hope, people. And the demoniac. Nobody could tame the lion in him. And he wanted to follow Jesus. And Jesus said, no. Everybody that knew me, you, you as ought to be in control. And, you know, the sister's coming. She says, I, I want to do her testimony. And she didn't just get deliverance here. She got, after that major deliverance here, she continued getting deliverance. She went all over the world. And, and if it's a real testimony, I will put it up. But that's what the body of Christ, you need to believe what we read in the book. And then here, then. The certain of the vagabond Jews, they were exorcists. Get it? They were religious that had their own form of deliverance. Same thing in the body of Christ today. When you really get into it, there's no baloney here, it's a reality took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus. And these exorcists who were exercising demons in their own religion, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons. We all know the story. But the best part of the story is when this demon spoke. So don't don't tell me that the enemy don't speak the truth and always lies. I found out differently in my walk with God. I trump everybody with, he says he gives us power over all the power of the enemy. And if you don't ask, you don't, you don't hear. If you don't delve and dig, you don't find out. I have people I prayed months and months with. And finally, from prayer and fasting for those people, when I wasn't with them, their demons opened up their big fat mouths, not the person, the demons, and said, we hate you. You never stop praying. Remember, we're in the spiritual. The enemy even knows who prays, who fasts. You're on the barometer. I preached that message years ago. Does Satan in hell know your name? You can't pray demons out. You got to cast them out. Ask the guys that were at church Sunday. I don't care who you are. Everybody's got something. I got deliverance three times in the last week. The men that were with me yesterday, they actually saw the supernatural working. They prayed for me. And we were all excited, okay? So here, and the evil spirit answered and said, now this is a demon, it's talking. Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? You know, when these, these phony baloney deliverance camps that don't do deliverance, 
and then they can't get anywhere with an evil spirit. They turn around and say, well, you need inner healing. You know? I heard another demonized guy tell me, you can't talk to this guy about demons. Well, that's the problem with the guy. Once you know the truth, you can be set free. And sometimes it takes like the Mike Thier experience. You keep going until the thing leaves. Sometimes demons are there to teach us. I always tell them they're God's stool pigeons. You know, because in, in the ultimate, we win, they lose. And if you put God's word into practice, you will have the victory. And I love this chapter. And I love you, Paul, for giving me a break so I can expound on it the same way uh, our sister Cecilia did. And you go up there, okay, people are viewing. The, the one I did the other day, 28 views already. That's in three days. Even Adam, his is growing. And there's likes going up on all these messages. You know, if you're an internet junkie and you're seeking the truth and you're crying out to God, you know, the sister that said to me yesterday, man, you're an answer to prayer. I was asking God, I need more deliverance. Well, she's going to every deliverance camp under the sun and she's not getting delivered, you know? So you keep seeking. You open your Bible, you do what the Bible tells you to do. When your heart's in it, God's in it. Anyway, I hope this blesses someone out there in the future that hears this message. And, and God bless you all today. Our ministry's on the internet. You found us. Maybe God wants you to visit with us or one of our other ministries. You know, when I send out ministries, I basically, there's so much corruption in Christianity today. I just got to keep it amongst the believers that I know are not falling over into false teaching, false doctrine. You know, you got to be in the army. You can't be a wall. You, you, you got to believe in the cause of the army of God. It's not words. The word of God is not a matter of talk, but dunamis. First Corinthians 4.20, read it until you get it. And God bless everybody today. Amen.